Earlier this week, the British Board of Boxing Control ordered Huey Fury to face Dylan White for the vacant British heavyweight title. Now, Dylan White was clearly up for the fight. He wanted the fight. But unfortunately, Team Fury, Huey and his dad, turned the fight down point blank. And their reasoning for turning the fight down is, we don't fight friends. Apparently, that's what they said. Now again, Dylan White was up for, up for the fight. So it's curious that they say we don't fight friends because Dylan White clearly didn't have a problem with it. And to be 100% fair, Dylan White is friendly with the Fury team. He's been up there and sparred with many of them on more than one occasion. As I say, <laughs> Huey Fury sees the friendship as a problem. Dylan White don't. But this is not the first time that Huey Fury has turned down a fight. And it's not the first time the Fury camp has turned down a fight. I mean, if you go back a couple years, didn't Tyson Fury vacate the British title rather than fight David Price? He did. Now, you look at Huey Fury. A year or so ago, he turned down the opportunity to face Anthony Joshua. Now, I don't know if a formal... Uh, offer was made to him by Matchroom but in interviews with Bay Lorick TV and other people Peter Fury very candidly said Huey is not physically mature enough yet to fight Anthony Joshua this is what he said in these Bay Lorick TV interviews he's not physically mature enough yet to fight him Fury's on his own path Joshua should pursue his own, own path there's a big age gap between them and at the time I did a video saying it's not really about age because Peter Fury kept on bringing the age thing up, saying that there was a big age gap between Huey and Joshua. And for that reason, you know, they don't need to be fighting yet. And that Joshua needs to be fighting Tyson Fury, even though Tyson at the time had way more fights than Joshua. And yet Huey and Joshua had about the same amount of fights. And I made a video saying it's not really about age. It's about experience. If you turn professional at an early age, then you're going to be ready for a title shot you know, earlier than someone else who turned professional at a later age in most instances. For example, Muhammad Ali turned professional at 18 years old and he fought for the world title when he was 22. Prince Nassim turned professional, I believe, around that same type of age and his first world title, I think, when he was 21 was when he won his first title. Uh, Floyd Patterson, again, turned pro young, won the world title at 21. Wilfred Benitez, I can't, I don't know what the age he turned professional, but he won the world title at like 17 or 18 years old. You know, Canelo turned professional very young, won his world title very young. Amir Khan turned professional at 18 years old, won his first professional world title, what was he, 22, 23, when he won it? So it's not about age, it's about experience. If you turn professional earlier, then there's no reason why you can't be fighting, uh, you know, good level opposition, European world level opposition by the time you're in your early 20s. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to go for a title shot, but surely you can be fighting your domestic rivals by the time you're in your early 20s. Surely, as long as you've got as, mu as much experience as them. The only reason that you wouldn't is if you're not good enough. It's not about age. It's about whether you're good enough. And different fighters develop in terms of how good they are at different rates which is not really based on age so what Peter Fury was really saying when he said that Huey wasn't ready for Anthony Joshua it was nothing to do with age it's just because he believed that Huey wasn't good enough yet just not good enough to step in the ring with Joshua yet it's not about the physical maturity and all that type of stuff I don't buy all that <clears throat> Because he had the same type of experience as Joshua. In fact, he's got more experience than Joshua as an amateur. Not uh, as high a level, obviously, but still more experience than Joshua boxing just in his life. So he just, that, that's all it was. He wasn't good enough. Now, he was also offered a Joshua fight. And I believe this was a, an actual offer earlier this year. But I can't remember the, the reasoning for turning it down that time. Maybe they felt like there wasn't enough time to prepare or whatever the case. I don't know. But they turned it down yet again this year. The opportunity to face Joshua. And Huey and his team 
have also turned down several, more than one uh, offer to face WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder. Now, they also say that Wilder was, you know, offered them the fight on short notice. All right, fair enough. If you don't want to take a fight on short notice, I can understand that. But didn't uh, Vitaly Klitschko take on one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, Lennox Lewis, on two weeks notice? Yeah, he did. And that's Lennox Lewis, one of the greatest heavyweights ever. And a guy who was a very, very established champion, who'd fought at a very high level. And Vitaly said, yep, I'll take the fight. Two weeks notice, I'll do it. Now, to be fair, Vitaly was in training for another fight. He was supposed to be fighting on Lewis's undercard. So he was going to fight that night regardless. But surely Huey was, Huey was in training for fights when he got those call-ups to face Deontay Wilder. And either way, so many Wilder fans seem to believe, sorry, so many Fury fans, so many Fury fans seem to believe that Deontay Wilder is rubbish. So why not take a fight at short notice against the guy who you claim is rubbish? If he's that rubbish, surely Huey can beat him on short notice. If he's that terrible as you claim that he is. Well, obviously, Team Fury don't think he's that rubbish and that terrible because they're not willing to take the fight on short notice. They think they need a full camp because it's a dangerous fight. It is what it is. And just imagine if it had been Anthony Joshua or, you know, one of these other fighters out here who had turned down these opportunities and used these excuses or these reasons for turning down the opportunities. Can you imagine what a roasting they would have got from scores of people on the internet? They would have got absolutely torn to shreds for turning down those fights. But with Huey Fury and the Fury supporters, and to some extent, I'm also a, a Fury supporter. <laughs> you know, I do like Tyson Fury. I think he's great for the game. I think we need a heavyweight champion like him in terms of what he represents outside of the ring, particularly. But that's a subject for another video. But, uh, you know, I always say, man, no fighter is below praise. No fighter is above criticism. And, you know, same for Huey Fury, man. That's how I see it. But yeah, it's unfortunate that so many Fury fans just don't hold that same type of uh, standard, that same type of consistency. When it's Huey or Tyson avoiding fights, oh, we got excuses all day for that. Don't criticize them. You're a hater if you criticize them for that. But yet put one of their rivals in that same position, turning down fights left and right. And oh, he's a coward. Oh, look at him. He's rubbish. Oh, he's a fraud. That's what they're going to say. Double standards galore. Anyway, people, what do you think about this Huey Fury situation turning down the Dylan White fight? And as I say, previous fights. But in this specific case, turning down the Dylan White fight. Dylan didn't have any problem with it. But Huey and, his, Huey and his team used the excuse that we don't fight friends. Are you disappointed by this? Were, is that a fight you were looking forward to? Who do you think would have won that fight if it had gone ahead? And now that it's not going ahead, I believe Dylan White has reached out to uh, Derek Chisora and David Price and said, come on, one of you guys step up. Let's fight for the British title. Let's do it. Uh, what do you think would happen in either of those fights? Dylan White against Chisora, against Chisora or Dylan White against David Price? It's, it, to me, both of those fights are interesting because Dylan White is coming off a layoff and an injury. So we don't know where he's going to be at. Uh, I'm sure he's going to have a, a tune-up fight at least, but I think he needs at least a couple tune-up fights and decent tune-up fights. Guys who are going to take him a few rounds. After that, if he's looking good, then I'd probably make him favorite to beat both of those guys. In fact, I'd make him favorite to beat Chisora anyway, but Price is a big, tall guy. He can really punch. You know, I know he's chinny, but Still, uh, to me, that's a more dangerous fight for Dylan White than the Chisora fight, just stylistically. You know, forget about Price's chin and heart. Stylistically, I think it's a more dangerous fight for Dylan White. But if he gets himself together, gets a couple of good wins, and we can see him in much better condition than he was in against Joshua, then yeah, I could conceivably make him favorite definitely against Price too. 
And we have to see what Price looks like when he comes back as well. So, yeah. No fight is below praise, people. No fighter is above criticism. Does Huey Fury deserve criticism for these fights he's turning down? You let me know in the comment section below. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.